Hi, this is Ingrid at TechCrunch, and I am sitting here at Disrupt in San Francisco with Roderick. Uh, Roderick is from Spin Coffee out in Amsterdam. Well, we're, my fellow we're, Euros. We're in San Francisco as well. Uh, okay, like uh, me, I'm in both places too. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so tell us what you're doing here at Spin. So Spin is a new way to brew your coffee. Uh, we started in Amsterdam where we came up with a patent to brew centrifugal force coffee and um, started the business back in, uh, in November and came to San Francisco for a hardware accelerator called Highway One from yep. PCH. And what we're doing, we're building a connected coffee machine that is using centrifugal force to brew a cup of coffee. And with the centrifugal force, we can make all different styles of coffee. So we can make an espresso, but also a drip coffee. So the way it works, this is the spinner. And the spinner is the, uh, the heart of our machine, basically. So what happens, the fresh grinded beans come into the spinner, the hot water comes in, the machine spins it up, and depending on the choice of coffee that you made, it's making an espresso, it spins really fast, you have a high pressure in the brewing chamber with a little bit of a thin grind and a little bit of water, you get an espresso. And then when you spin it slow speed with, a, with lots of water and coarse ground, you get a drip filter coffee. Right. So, is the, you know, when you're doing the espresso spinning, mm -hmm. is it similar to the, I mean, how does it on par with the bars of right. pressure of a, one of those massive espresso machines at exactly. a, you know, cafe? So, with centrifugal force, if you, um, so there are three tiny holes here from 0 0.04 mu, actually, uh, where the pressure buildup happens. Uh -huh. So, when you spin this spinner like 9,000 to 14,000 RPM, you get a high pressure, G-force. Right. So we can mimic the pressure that you need for an espresso. Okay. Consistent feedback from drinkers from our espressos and you know baristas, top coffee roasters, they all love the taste of the espresso. And I have to say, I'm still convinced when I take another cup of spin coffee in the morning, I'm amazed by, by the quality and the taste of the, the espresso and also the drip coffee. Okay, so the, um, how do you, what do you do if you live in a house where you've got um, like, uh, a person who likes decaf and a person who likes caffeinated. Do you have to literally replace the beans or do you have two hatches in there right. or what? So we're working on the prototype now and uh, we're working on the DFM and we're, um, we're also thinking about how to offer decaf in your coffee machine. So we're thinking about a little tube that you can put on the hopper uh, where your special rose will come in. Right. And uh, we're also thinking about different hoppers that you t can take off, put in the fridge for example, and put another hopper on. Yeah, because so, I know it's the, part of the idea, which you, I don't think you've quite got to just yet, is mm -hmm. that you've got a sensor, it's a Wi-Fi connected coffee machine, right? Correct. So you've got a sensor in the top part, yeah. um, which is detecting how much coffee you've got left in there, and then it sort of automatically orders from one of your favorite suppliers. Exactly, so. And you don't know which one is going to come when. Uh, yes, it's you do It's a little know. bit like a random playlist. It is not. No, oh, okay. it is not a random playlist. So okay. you put your playlist in iTunes on shuffle. Right, it's you a don't shuffled know. of yeah. your playlist. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so what we're doing, uh, the, the, the machine is Wi-Fi connected, and uh -huh. then there is a marketplace for local coffee roasters. And you browse and search for your local roast. Great. So Square Mile, for example, your Square favorite Mile roast. Is He's saying Square Mile because when we were talking off camera, I was saying how much I love their coffee in London. It's a wonderful coffee. Yeah, place. it's yeah. great. So if, if they are in the marketplace, you can select them. The machine has built-in sensors, so when your machine is running low, when there's yeah. only 10% left, for example, it will automatically order from your bean list, is how we call it. Yeah. And the bean list is like a, a playlist for songs, basically, and it's a queue for coffee orders. Okay. So the next will be up, and then the order will go out to Square Mile in this example. Okay. And Square Mile will send you a new bag of beans that are freshly roasted, on demand, and uh, better tasting coffee, basically. Okay, so what, what sort of price are we talking about for something like this? How much are you looking for this So device? we're working on the prototype in the bomb now, but uh, we're going to do a pre-order campaign soon, and we're aiming at a price point of $499. $499? $499. Okay, tell us how that compares to... I know the price of these things, but I just want you to say, how does it comparing to, you know, the AeroPress? Yeah. Well, uh, maybe, uh, maybe or the you know the AeroPress, which you know just for for, for you coffee people who don't <coughs> know uh, what this is, it's a it's a very 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 primitive basic right. kind of 
essentially like a little injection system. It's, a, it's an AeroPress, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe a better uh, uh, comparison will be the Nespresso or the okay. Keurig machine. Okay. Because you have to realize that Nespresso and Keurig try to capture you in, the, in their hardware form factor. Yeah. Where you're depending Irritating. on those pods for the rest of the lifetime of the machine. Right. And the total cost of ownership of one of those Nespresso or Keurig machines is around three to four thousand dollars over the lifetime of that machine right. because you keep on buying those pods. That's right. Those pods are not fresh because the grinds in there are grinded six months ago, and uh, basically. I've tasted Keurig here in the States, and maybe you too. Uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a different taste, let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting because um, my mother-in-law has this Swiss machine, which is, is basically a, a more modeled on a, just a big, regular coffee espresso machine. Right. But it also has the beans, I think it even has a sensor, but there yeah. are many parts to it, mm -hmm. and there's inevitably something needs to be serviced and they live in France and it needs to be serviced in Switzerland it's yes. actually super expensive yeah so I, I quite like how this is, seems to be doing away with a lot of the extra pieces of infrastructure exactly so we looked at the, the marketplace and then and the coffee industry in general and there is very low innovation if you look right. at what's happening in the coffee industry the, re yep. the last real innovation was this single serve brewing chamber 20 years ago invented by a Swiss man and he, uh, he builds Nespresso on right. top of it. So Nespresso right. tried three times to bring it to market, it failed. And then they came up with a high level marketing with George Clooney involved, where you see him standing on the Como leg. I with could three, kill George. With, <laughs> <laughs> with six beautiful women Damn drink, him. drinking very old coffee, I know. basically. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So um, yeah. that was the, uh, so Nespresso capitalized on the patent for the brewer, uh, the, ch the, the brewing chamber for around 12 years. Yeah. And that patent expired now. And it's, uh, well, the coffee industry is ready for for new innovation. I agree. And what you see in, in Y Combinator and Highway One, that there are coffee uh, uh, ventures and coffee companies uh, coming into those accelerated programs as well, because the coffee market is ready for innovation. Yeah. And we think that with the spinner, we can build a whole new category within the coffee industry, yeah. where uh, you have a choice of espresso now and a drip coffee, yeah. and in three years again, you will walk into your coffee shop and ask for a double spinner latte. Yeah, right? let's see. So the spinner is, um, yeah, is, is something new. Cool, well, thank you very much, uh, Roderick, um, and um, here's hoping you give the coffee industry a real jolt. Exactly, <laughs> and say no to bad coffee. Did you see what I did there? Say no to bad yeah. coffee, yeah. Re the real jolt. <laughs> yeah, like a caffeine jolt. Right. You know? yeah. All right. Get it? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.